one of probably about this five people being recorded. doing FAA COVID decons. So I was answering calls basically 24 seven. Why? As I look down at my phone and there's another one, but it's okay. Somebody else is on call tonight. <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting to order. Roll call. All right. Oh, my goodness. Ms. Hudson. Here. James Coyle. Here. Scott Patton. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Richard Bramerson. Here. Terry Moyer. Here. Tyler Munson. Here. All right. <laughs> And to the public for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's a nice echo. Proof of posting. A copy of this notice was delivered on 128. It was faxed to Star News, posted at the municipal building, Black Earth, Black Earth Post Office and posted on the webpage www.blackearthwisconsin.com and faxed to the Cross Plains State Bank Black Earth branch for posting. <clears throat> Any public comment? <clears throat> Hearing none and seeing none, let's move on to action item five. Uh, discussion action regarding puppy mill ordinance. Scott. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. I wish I could be there in person to do this, but if you all you prob all probably got uh, a couple of three by five cards in the mail in the last month or so. Um, there, we you need to have a protective ordinance um, in place, uh, as Spring Green found out when a puppy mill moved in for experimental purposes, and of course the community didn't have anything in place uh, and uh, the puppy mill won. And uh, being a dog lover, I just thought I'd bring not only a, a copy of what I've been getting in the mail, um, but also a copy of the ordinance. And I believe that's from Kimberly, Wisconsin. And tonight we don't have to, I mean, I'm. we could just discuss it tonight and bring it back around because I, don't hear of anything in the offing right now, but if you'd all just kind of take a minute to chew on that and, and read about uh, what those puppy mills really end up doing, uh, I would appreciate it. And then I'd like to bring it around. Um, maybe if someone has additions to the Kimberly uh, ordinance or, and, and I know that there's, there's other, um, you'll see that website on that postcard. There are other ordinances too that you may or may want to consider, but I for one don't want to see a puppy mill move into Black Earth. So that's why I brought it. And I thank you, thank you Mitch for bringing that up for putting it on the agenda. Do you have, do we have the ordinance anywhere in there? Yeah, I have. We have we've, actually, we've, we've actually done this back in, Probably, well, I don't know if it was the time that Spring Green had it. I didn't find we, it. You'd have I'm, to. I'm, yeah, did I, it not make the webpage? I would say it was probably 2010, maybe? Somewhere well, in that area. Um, okay, let's. We, yeah, it's a good idea, I'm, but I'm pretty sure we, we did something like this already. I couldn't find anything, so. Um, if someone can come up within the labyrinth of ordinances that can prove to me that we've got it in place, then we can just drop it. Um, yeah, otherwise, we can do it. We well, do it yeah, we don't, we don't find it. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure we did this already. Danny pulled okay. samples from other communities today, too. So we have some other ones that we can look at. We have the craft ones. Okay. Then I'd probably request that we we dig to find out whether or not there is something in place. And if not, let's bring this back around next month. Yeah. If that's Absolutely. okay with, every, with, with everybody. Yeah. Uh, that sounds good. We'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. 
Aren't we already going through a review of our ordinances? Is there something we can add to that? You no, could, no, but you got to create the ordinance before yeah. it can be part of that yeah, anyway. So, okay. so that'd be my request. Okay, thank you. All right, discussion action on Gateway to Driffle's letter of support to Dane County Parks. Um, Mary or Peter? You want to take this? Yes, I think Peter should take it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. I'm happy to take it. Thank you, Mitch. I'll just take a minute to put the letter in context. I think all of you got it in your board packet. And on behalf of the Gateway, I would just want to thank the Village of Black Earth and our other two partner villages of Cross Plains and Mazamani for working with us to keep the momentum up on construction, development, and marketing of the multi-use trail that's envisioned from Middleton all the way to the Wisconsin River on the Dane County side of the river, and then further trail on the Sauk County side with the Great Sauk Trail from Sauk City all the way to Reedsburg. Um, some of you are aware and have seen the economic impact study that was done about a year ago at this time was finished by the two UW extension divisions from Sauk and Dane counties that when finished, that trail would be the busiest trail in the state, which bodes well for smart economic growth, not only in the village of Black Earth, but across our whole region, uh, built around outdoor recreation and, of course, bringing people in to use that trail, looking for services and goods from vendors in Black Earth, for example, or even in some of the townships. So the letter that you have before you is it piggybacks on a letter that we sent last summer. Some of you were involved in that, where we sent it to the Dane County Executive requesting that money be put in the budget to share with, with Sauk County for construction of the bridge across the river. The secondary project, really, I shouldn't say secondary, but the trail project is, is also in the hopper uh, that I just described. And the letter that you have before you is from the partner villages on the gateway, Dane County Parks in their open space plan names the gateway to the Driftless as the partner to work with on construction and marketing of that trail. We don't know what that means in terms of a partnership. So the letter that we uh, created in, in conjunction with the three villages is a proposal to Dane County Parks to open negotiations, if you will, or discussions about what it means to partner. Uh, what, what, would we, what would we be doing as a gateway and the villages to promote and help build that trail that Dane County Park says is a, is a priority? So it's kind of a resource question. Uh, Dane County is saying, we, we know that we want to get the trail done but we need a partner to work with. And we, we need to know in terms of the gateway being named as the partner because it's a regional project. It's not just each individual village. What does that mean for the gateway? What does it mean for the villages in terms of resources? And how are we supposed to go about being the partner when we don't know what the job is? So the letter that you'd be signing tonight, and I, I would take it to Mesa Mania to be signed next week at their board meeting and to Cross Plains, is to ask the Dane County Parks Commission through Dave Rip to open discussions and negotiations on a memorandum of agreement for that partnership. So if you have some questions, Mary and I can, can kind of speak to that. Shelley has been part of discussions about around this letter and the, the idea of the partnership. So I just open it up, uh, Mitch, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> well, Peter, I'm just concerned. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Mitch. Uh, I think what we're looking for is a motion to go ahead and approve this, our support for this letter if everybody's read it. And that would allow me to sign it and Shelly to sign it. So I would move approval. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll do it twice. Aye. 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 Aye.
Okay, it passes. <clears throat> well, thank right. you, Mitch. Thank you, thank you Mitch. And yeah. I, I'll stop at I'll stop at the village office tomorrow and pick up the three copies that you're going to be signing at the end of the meeting to take them over to Peter Hebner and Mesa Maney. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Special action regarding village minutes from 10 110 of 2022. I think most of the approve the minutes from 10 20 january 10 10 20 22. Second. <laughs> wow. second, yeah okay any discussion all in favor aye 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 opposed all right passes uh discussion action on treasurer's report december 2021 financials through the report for January. All right, the treasurer's report is through the month of December 2021. This is pre audit at this point. At this time, we were sitting with uh, 5.5 million in all of our accounts. Our December tax collections are 37% uh, or 1.2 million, which you'll see in your money market uh, cash account near the top. Uh, as a note, our January collections, which we are wrapping up uh, between yesterday and even today, were another 37% of our total, uh, another 1.2 million. Our January tax settlement out of the uh, money market account that you're seeing up here was about 852,000 to other taxing jurisdictions. Our electric CD that we um, borrowed for for the substation, if you recall, it was at 1.6 million and we stuck that in an investment account. It's earned about $880 in interest since August, which is a lot better than the rate we were going to get at LGIP. The LGIP interest during that same time is $359 and that's on 1.5 million since August. Really? So definite benefit for that investment account. Uh, your revenue and expenses are through January, and I did hand out the utility expense report, revenue and expenses tonight, uh, and I also emailed those out a little earlier today. Of course, we're really early into the year, and it's, we're not going to see a whole lot of revenue, at least on the general fund side. Those usually will start coming in within the first quarter as state shared revenues and other funds start coming through at that point. But on the general fund, of course, our revenues are sitting at 0.69%. <laughs> and our expenses are at 4.6%. On the electric side, the revenues are sitting at about 7.2% with expenses at 0.74. We do not have Vanguard's December invoice. Certainly not their January. I don't know. I see Sean's on the line. I don't know if Civic has helped fix that software issue yet. Um, but yep. that's uh, going to impact. That'll impact, of course, our December final totals and obviously January we get that. Shelly. Our water so, side yeah. Oops, sorry, not to cut in there, but uh, just to go along with that, it sounds like they're getting to the end of it and finally figuring it out. So I would expect here very shortly we'll have that pretty much wrapped up. So we apologize for the delay, but it's been kind of out of our hands and um, it's definitely been a software glitch on their end. So we're working through it as fast as we can. So hopefully. Hopefully we'll have it to you guys soon. Before it costs the, the software company money. That's that's sure. my point. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, that glitch is also holding up data for our rate case study as we are waiting for plant activity to get recorded that you know Sean and Lydia provide to us for uh, the year that will impact that rate study. So um, it's not for really the lack of trying, I can tell you that. No, so I know that we've been, you know, on, we've been on top of them. So I know Vanguard's been doing a great job with it, but you know, when you have something like that come along in the last meeting, and you you heard what I said back then, you know, they if they're not returning your phone calls and they're not being right on top of it, you know, you may want to consider another software company and another accounting service. So yep. just, my, just my point. Yep. Okay. Out on the utility budget, you're going to see in there that this proposed 2022 budget, those budgets for the utilities have not been approved yet. 
The electric proposed does incorporate an 8.5% increase to the purchase power expense. That's our Alliant Energy. They did get approved for an 8.5% increase to us, so it went up that, and our revenues are also reflecting an 8.5% as a um, start as a benchmark right now. I don't know what we'll get on the rate case study, but I'm pretty comfortable at 8.5% uh, right now. Um, on the water side, our revenues are sitting at about 6%, with expenses at 5 Our sewer revenue, we're at 7.8%, and our expenses are at 3%. I will um, also note that after this month's billing for January, we are seeing probably about a 10% increase in our electric usages compared to last year at this time, which is a good thing. And the other thing on financials is I also included payroll that was done just today. So that number would not have been included on one of your other reports that you get for your financials. And just a quick note, we did, with the last note, we did have about 27 hours of overtime paid out from the snow plowing on the table. That is your financials, the treasurer's report. The 10% uh, of the electrical, are we able to tell is that coming from like residential or business? Um, or? You know, if you look at the electric revenues at the top, you'll see where it's broken down for oh, residential, yeah. commercial, large power. We, we've had, um, I think there was what, how many, 20 some new customers last year, Sean, added? Yep. yep, something like that. And I know I know at Public Works, we talked about uh, getting a number for how many residential and our, how many rural customers we have. I did talk to Danny here earlier this week. She's been kind of busy. So uh, just when whenever she gets a chance, she's going to try to pull a report and we'll be able to give you guys an accurate number of total customers. Actually, have I have those reports pulled already, Sean. If you need is I can get them for you because I had to pull them for the rate case. But in answer to your question, Jerry, it's a combination. So last year at this time, you know, we still had businesses that were closed due to COVID. That's what I was wondering. So, the business open yeah, out. so we have businesses yeah. that are definitely open now, and obviously the new residential um, customers. Yeah. And you can see that our rural um, billable mm -hmm. and our village. Uh, the village is more, but now, I mean, there's quite a bit of rural billables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> well, and, and wasn't it for Shelly, you can kind of probably, uh, what I see, we had a 10 Ten percent rate of return for 2020. So we really didn't lose any money in 2020. We had a pretty good, pretty good year in 2020. Yeah, I don't know, but right now, from what I'm seeing on our it was report, it was ten percent on your annual report. Yeah, um, I'm projecting we're going to see roughly a ninety thousand dollar loss over this last year, though. So it's a rough projection pre audit. So until that's finished on the electric side, I'm not going to do that. All right. All right. That's all that I have. Make a motion. We approve uh, the treasurer's report and financial report for. December, January. All right. Any more discussion? I know. You can hear Mitch's came on. Mitch is not in there. What? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It passes. A discussion action on invoices to be paid. I've also gotten a report to hand out on some extra invoices that came in since we distributed packets on Friday. Make you feel. I have a question on the um, shoe box. We pay. We pay for work boots. How frequently for public works? Once a year, you guys buy boots for public works. Safety toe is a requirement, so Black Earth pays for it. <laughs> That's a lot of with any. Yeah, a lot of municipalities. A lot of municipalities. That's almost a given. Yep. 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 
I just had one question. I had I had one question too, Matt. There was like a seventy dollar charge for some snow melt from Mezo Hardware. Yep, sidewalk salt. Okay. Got it. Just making sure we weren't uh, loading up the dump truck, the road truck, with uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not for $77. Yeah, seventy dollars to fill the dump truck. That'd be a hell of a deal. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'd say keep doing that. I'll make a motion. Uh, we approve the invoices to be paid. I'll second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I have All one more. Ones? Um, the Axley Brynerson. Um, there seems to be two identical charges. Are they the same service? Or if not, what's benchmark? Oh, they're not the same service. One was for the discussion on benchmark in case we had to move that legally forward. And the other one was, of course, just uh, wrapping up the Black Earth Elementary School uh, CSL. It's like a half an hour each. Can you remind me what benchmark was? Benchmark is the Heartland Nursing Home that was delinquent on their pilot agreement with the village that I discussed possibly having to take legal action on and that didn't get Right. Out. Sorry, forgot that that was the name of it. Oh, no problem. All right. So there's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, committee reports. Vanguard. Ooh. Hey, Sean, you want to fill me in on this? Uh, I was off with phone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nope. Uh, just like we talked to Public Works, we finished up, uh, we're finishing up our meter testing that we do every year. Everything's turning out pretty good uh, for both villages. Um, we're starting uh, doing quite a bit of trimming in our rural areas as far as tree trimming. Um, like I said earlier, we are uh, still working on the civic thing. So uh, you guys are updated on that. Um, also, Shelly, I think I seen you, uh, an email come back from Forrester uh, about an update on the substation. Sounds like they're making progress um, with this, the CA application and um, they're still working on the land land uh, purchase. So um, the guy that's doing our land purchasing is pretty busy. Sounds like he's gonna be getting it to it end of January, beginning of February. So that's kind of where we stand on that as of now. Um, other than that, that's about all I got. When's our next meeting? Uh, the 15th of March, I believe. Six. Six thirty. Yep, six thirty. Okay. Lacquer fire, Mary. Yes. Um, so we met on January thirteenth and uh they elected, well re-elected Dan Mahadka as the chief and Jason Richter as lieutenant. There's four new members members that are ready to go with all their certifications and two new members that are starting school. So we'll have six new members um, with a couple retirements possibly in the future, but it's still in the positive right now. The roof on the fire station is done, which is good. Um, they're looking to finish uh, the room that's been damaged by the flood and uh, they haven't gotten around to it yet. They're looking for somebody who installs cabinets. Uh, vehicle replacement schedule. We have a tentative schedule with the eight vehicles that we can uh, <clears throat> that need replacing, and they want to put that on a uh, separate those uh, from each other so that it's not all at once, so that they're staggered. Um, let's see, there's an AFG grant. Uh, they can replace tanker number six which is a very important tanker. I don't want to get into too much detail, but, it, detail, but it's quite a bit of money. $390,000 is the uh, 
grant that's been written for and uh, the deadline was January 21st, but they'll find out and be able to use the money if it does go through um, in the year. Uh, they're looking for the new Jeep. Uh, we capped it off by vote at $45,000. Hopefully it'll come underneath that. And uh, we're still talking about the retained earnings and the um, dedicated uh, funds. Um, still trying to decide what's going to be the best um, for each of the communities that's involved uh, so that we can find a plan that works for everybody and is amenable to everyone. And that's all we have. Um, anybody have any questions? Why did you have to? Next meeting, Mary? The next meeting is March 3rd at 6 30. Dean, Iowa. Uh, so we met on January 20th, uh, just a basic meeting, went over bills. Um, did have a meeting with the engineer to send out letters to all the villages, <coughs> basically looking for more information and asking for another meeting. Um, discussed uh, more possible phosphorus reductions uh, around kind of the village of Mazo area. There's no discharge violations. That was it. Is February 17th at 6.30. Thanks, James. All right, EDC, we met. EDC met January 19th at 615. Um, we talked about uh, uh, we talked about questions. We want to reach out to the businesses in the village, um, ask them uh, three simple questions, and actually go out and personally meet with them and say, you know, what can we do to help businesses in the village? Um, we plan to meet. Our next meeting will be February 16th at 615, where we'll fi finalize the business list. And, and decide who's going to go to what businesses and talk to them. So, got it. All right. Emergency management, Mary. We haven't had one. No. Yes, we haven't had one then since December, I think. And then, um, actually, I'm going to touch base with Shelly. There's some new information that I got at one of the um, uh, webinars that I attended um, where emergency management and working with the county and state level um, uh, mitigation experts, we might be able to get some grant money that may uh, go toward the Cooper property. So I think we need to um, discuss that and maybe find out any updates from Shelly about uh, the Stapley uh, submissions if we've heard back yet from the, the county's um, larger submission of all the municipalities. But we don't have a meeting date at this time. No, no, they've all been submitted for a FEMA review right now. So. Thanks, Mary. Uh, EMS committee. Uh, we met the uh, 13th of January. Um, they, due to a needing to hire LTEs, there's some funds that need to be moved around in the budget. Um, shouldn't be an issue, um, mostly because the call volume is so high. It's going to make up for any of the deficit that we um, would experience due to hiring a new LT. Yeah. So it's kind of a chicken and egg scenario. We got to pay somebody because we're having so many calls, but we need those calls to pay that person. So yeah. it, it's it's going to work out in the long run. Um, there was a specific call out that the hospitals are packed. Um, they're using triage rooms to offset emergency room calls. Um, so that. Um, I got the impression that it's very outside the norm, um, outside of standard operating procedures. So um, that was a little bit of a concern there. Um, Black Earth is met to uh, match or uh, succeed uh, Mazo in the number of runs, uh, ambulance runs we've had. And this again, this was unusual. So that was a specific call out there. Um, uh, the Lucas 3, which is the automated chest compression CPR machine. We, the, uh, the committee had approved 
uh, it was like 15,500, I believe, for the device. We had proved that we were going to do it over three installments. Um, it actually turns out Dane County is going to buy that for us. So, um, perfect. Yeah, exactly. Good for them. So we don't have to worry about the next coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it turns out they had some money, and, and basically, we were one of the only county or one of the only departments that didn't have the machine. So, they're kind of bringing us up to date. So, that was pretty cool. Right. Much easier. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. From the one little video I saw, it seemed like, yeah, it was a lot easier. <laughs> Better about the police um, budget. <laughs> L, uh, in regards to the LTE position, um, they're not really getting uh, any volunteers coming in. I think they have two, um, but it's going to be a year plus before they're actually viable to be out on um, ambulance calls. Um, they lost an additional three more volunteers since the previous. Um, let's see. Yeah, so they got 31 members total right now with four four rookies coming on board in six months. So we, we got we lost a whole bunch, but we got four. I think a year ago, what were they? 64. Yeah, they they every time I go to a meeting, we've lost at least you know up to five every time. Yeah, it's not political. It changes the life, moving yeah. on. School. Yeah. Right. Yep. There. Yeah. There's a lot of different uh, variables there. Um, the volunteers did uh, want. It to be specifically known to the committee that they wanted it called out that um, there's at least a dozen of the volunteers that are uh, between the age of 60 and 70, and all of them, for one reason or another, are are, look, are basically on their way out. Um, they're pretty much only hanging around because they're they're trying to do their civic duty. So um, that was cause for concern. Um, they are. Uh, we did approve to um, hire that LTE position. Um, and uh, volunteers will have the ability to um, apply for that position um, as well. Um, there was a little bit of concern about, well, are we going to lose a volunteer to that position? And it basically came back, you know, whoever takes that, that position is basically coming in with the understanding that they're getting the graveyard shifts, they're getting that low seniority type stuff. Yeah. Um, so they're not too worried about the volunteers wanting to step into that role. Um, Jim is out May 1st. Um, so that's why they're doing a lot of the hiring and, and restructuring. So that will be a pretty significant loss to the, to the department. Um, he does a lot of weight. So they're looking to um, fill that position and get that back staff and trained and everything. Um, next meeting is February 15th at 6.30. Thanks, Jerry. Library board. Terry. We met on January 18th. Um, we discussed the annual report. Bailey's making great progress on that. She attended a webinar, and she's gotten good help from the um, South Central Library System. It's due 225, but I think Bailey was thinking she'd have a draft to us for our, our next meeting is February 15th, so we'll review the draft then. Uh, we discussed year um, end of year spending. Uh, Bailey's very comfortable where we're at with our final numbers. Uh, we we reviewed and approved a resolution regarding the vacation time to carry over. It was kind of to update their personnel handbook, make it easy for um, staff, and a copy was going to be signed and turned into Shelley, so Shelley would have it as the payroll mm -hmm. administrator. So we took care of that. Thank you. And I won't steal all of Bailey's Center, but there's a new children's area rug in there, and it's adorable. <laughs> I love it. i got to bring my Hot Wheels and farm tractors in and play it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, you can. It's adorable. Just a little road. So with that, I won't steal any more of her thunder, but good work going on. And our next meeting is February 15th. Um, so, mm -hmm. additional updates, um, trivia night was postponed for the Friends. Um, it was scheduled um, late January, but it was postponed due to the number of COVID. Um, we're hoping that we can reschedule it for the um, <laughs> yeah. um, And then we're also, we received a shipment of KN95 masks from uh, Public Health of Madison in Dane County. Um, so we are distributing those at the library. They're available for free. Um, there's a limit of one per person per day, but we've been um, pretty lenient with that as long as nobody's taking a whole box. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and of course, we've got a new children's area rug that we're, Love that rug. That we're really excited for. Um, it's um, 
super cute. It's also the same one that I had in my like hometown library growing up, so it's like pretty nostalgic. For it's so cool. <laughs> um, it fits yeah. in that corner just perfect too. It's really cute. Yeah, um, and our next meeting is on the 15th. Awesome. Thanks, Bailey. Public Works, Scott. <laughs> We met on January 24th, and a lot of the discussion previous to this has been related to Vanguard, so I'm gonna jump down to, um, <clears throat> we've decided to go with Cenex fleet cards. We've had this back and forth with uh, Quick Trip and BP, and so we've ended up deciding that we're going to use Cenex fleet cards recommended for police public works and replace the other cards. Um, Major Call reported the new hire is working well. He's working on obtaining his CDL. 16 new meters been put in and the ice rink is going well and being used daily. Um, we talked about equipment and this is something that I think the board needs to really pay attention to. This town does not have an elevation. We need to jet and we need a jetter that works and we have a 45 year old jetter. And I hate to thrust all this money at you, but they're not cheap. And, uh, but they're very, very crucial to what we've got going on here. We have uh, no elevation. So we're, we're talking, keeping that on the front burner and looking for ways and I'll, I won't, I know Matt's been looking into it, um, and I'll let him talk more about that. Also, a chipper, Vanguard's looking to, at a new one. Uh, might be time to get our own chipper because we pay them six thousand dollars a year a year to to use theirs. Um, the Perel ditch is about seventy five percent done. It needs rip rap yet, and I haven't heard that kind of music. But rip rap, I'm into it. Um, Let's see, in Blacker's school site. Shelley helped me with this one. We discussed the uh, recent meeting on prelim proposal for the site. And I think that was covered earlier in the meeting. Um, Cooper property keeps going on and with Peter pushing forward. Um, CDL training for Luke. Our new hire, virtual training on cross connections coming up. And uh, our next meeting will be February 22nd at 1 p.m. Thanks, Scott. Matt. Whatever, thanks. All right. <laughs> um, Luke did go in for another um, it's written or online test. Um, so he's got another portion of CDL, has all of the instructional learner's permit, you want to say. Um, so the next step would be actually just doing the on-road testing. So we'll probably look at that in the next coming months. Um, as Scott had mentioned, uh, Public Works is going to kind of work together to get a kind of capital project for roads and such like that, plus the equipment replacement. Um, we did do a Zoom training. There was a training for Diggers Hotline, which that was canceled for tomorrow. That was going to be an in-person, but that's canceled with everything going on. Um, Shelly did mention overtime of 27 hours. Um, I had some holiday pay in there, plus on that holiday pay, there was some activity going around at Perel's Ditch that required me to be in for a few hours. But then obviously the snow plowing, which is way under what we've been doing this year. We've been pretty fortunate as far as a budget standpoint on snow. Snow lovers, it's not such a good thing, but yeah. we're missing out on the big one. That's going south of us. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, it is. Yeah, Sean's getting that. <laughs> um, other than that, I think Scott did well job of picking everything, or good job picking everything up there. So, so my Thanks, final Megan. before before I get done, keep thinking, Jetter and Street Sweeper. <laughs> Those. My 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 comment on that too, if I'm allowed to talk on it, is those two pieces of our of equipment are a lot cheaper than than a flooded property. Yes. And it does. It only takes one property. 
Yeah, your I husband agree. picked up our old jitter we have. <laughs> I know. I figured 45 years old, he had to have picked that. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that came from Columbus, he said. Yeah. Uh, what is our current state of our jitter? Is it like something that's oh, on its way out? Yeah. Or? yeah. Uh, it's uh, like said, Say great grandpa. Great grandpa. Yeah. 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 It, it runs. It'll do some sewer jetting, but every time you use it, it's pretty nervous. Say if you have an emergency, if it's going to yeah. actually be able to do its job technically. Okay. And parts are just at that age are very hard to come by unless we're trying to do a antique roadhouse refurbishment here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But that's so what we're we're kind of kind of looking at. I've been in touch with some uh, uh, sales reps. Um, kind of told them we've switched gears prioritizing a sewer debt or kind of what okay. we're looking for. Um, right now the one we have is just strictly for jetting sewers, sanitary sewers. Um, I would like to see something that we could maybe use to do some stormwater stuff, clean the catch basins, kind of make it a multi-purpose, but that also does come with expense as well. So, so there public works here right now. Public works will weigh that out. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was more curious if it's like, yeah. <laughs> this thing's broken and we need to fix it now, kind of uh, the situation. Kind of. Not <laughs> far off. Not yeah, far away. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, though. Yeah, thank you. Well, Jared, Parks Committee. Um, yeah, uh, so we met uh, 24th of January. Um, we talked about the Cooper property. Uh, Matt, you were going to get that priced out. We were going to talk about, uh, well, we, went, we were looking at two options, right? We're, so we were either going to demo it, um, which is one of the things we asked you to check out, and then the other one was uh, having the fire department burn it down. Um, so I don't know if, if you guys... We'll talk more about that at our officers meeting today. Okay, that's fair. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with that. We did talk about, you know, the sidewalk condition, what we're going to do as far as, like, parking and, and things of that nature. So that's all ongoing. Um, uh, we just kind of verified that, you know, the maintenance of the property is going to be under under control and everything. So um, there's no worry about that, whether it's going to cost more time or anything on that. Um, uh, we talked about the trail extension. Really the only thing around that is the letter that the gateway is sending out. Um, nothing too much further on that. Uh, we talked about the elementary school. Um, we don't really have, we didn't really have too much at that time. There's the concern of, you know, park equipment. We want to try and get park equipment, or um, if, just in general, what's going on with that park equipment, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but one of the concerns that was called out is the need for a parking lot. Um, we've got the ball field, but are we going to have places for people to park to go to the game? So um, that will be ongoing discussions, but it's in our, the forefront of our mind at the very least. Um, we talked about uh, Veterans Park um, with the barbecue pit and the fencing and everything. We're just going to leave it as is for now, um, put a coat of paint on, do general repairs, but with the lot house coming in, um, there's no point in doing a big overhaul project on that. Um, uh, basketball courts, we uh, I believe we tabled that one and we're going to talk about that further. Um, we want to we want to update we do some maintenance to the basketball court. We haven't decided what we're going to do yet, but it needs some work, and we're going to um, we're going to spend some time on that. Um, there's also talk of renting the brush hog to clear up by the um, water tower, the trail, and how we want to handle that. Um, that got approved. Did we approved that. Yeah, I believe. Right? numbers on it. Um, whether we're going to do it ourselves or contract. That's what I was. You yep. guys wanted to see the comparables. Yep. Um, and if we do get it ourselves, then there's talk of maybe. Uh, Renting it out to Vanguard. Yep, bumming. <laughs> Sean, you're still on, right? Yep, I'm here. Hey, how about you give us a freebie? I wasn't sure how to word that one. <laughs> yeah, so, um, since the machine will be here, kind of seeing it use it throughout all the utilities water, sewer, parks, uh, maybe electrical as well. Yeah. So. So if we yeah, because we could rent it. For we would definitely be able to use it, and if we could split the cost with you guys, that'll work out good. Definitely figure something out there. Um, future items we're going to talk about is getting trees put back in community park um, and park. our veterans yep. park. I'm sorry. Um, and then uh, the ice rink is, looks like we have some people that are wanting to volunteer and um, um, and just general lighting and that sense of experience over there, making that a little better for the community. So. Uh, next meeting is February 21st at 6 p.m. Thank you. Police committee, Scott. <clears throat> First off, Mitch, I appreciate you taking the time to chair that meeting for me while I was down with the plague. <laughs> uh, I do have, have you both covered. 
Oh, good. You got the minutes? <laughs> I, do have, I do have the minutes here. Um, uh, this November, December 2021 call reports. Uh, Cartman reported those. No reports for December were received for the meeting. There were 34 with citations with 163 calls by local officers, total of 184 calls for the month. Quick trip issue is now pay at pump. So that will stop all that drive off stuff. Um, career day attended. Deputy Vinny reported scams an issue, as we all know. Um, I'm not sure I want to talk about the dog when the cooler fell off the back of the whatever. Um, <laughs> gift card scams are running high with mental health calls. Uh, and there was a carjacking by gunpoint in Madison resulting in extra patrol activity. And I don't know if that meant that we had to go out there no, on the West. Black Earth residence. It was a Black oh. Earth residence and it was extra patrol on their house. I see. <laughs> Okay, uh, this, uh, police activities are pretty much all on hold. You know, coffee with a cop, the things that we like to do for the community due to COVID. And I can certainly see why from a firsthand view. Um, discussion action on schedule changes. Um, there's still union changes impacting the contract with the village, which you can be happy or unhappy with. I'm un unhappy with it because I think that if a village is going to contract the county to come in and be their police force, that it should be all in, when we budget it, it should be there, it should be solid, and we shouldn't have to worry about, you know, this extra crap that they throw at us. And that that's as good as I can put it for how I feel. Um, um let's see but Pat, if i can just jump in there a second so what we decided to do was offset certain days where they'll work actually out in the county instead of for the village to offset some of that increased yeah budget right so right so it, we will um, we'll be notified then or how does that work yeah, yeah. we'll be notified i think that's still a work in progress yeah oh we don't get to pick when well no, I, it's when they're not that's well, there's that's days. that's my point. And I don't, they, you know, they've got a lot of power here in Black Earth, a lot more power than they had 20 years ago. So my point is, it should be us saying when those shifts should be not here or not, and that should be under police committee. It's my own personal opinion, but yeah, I mean, the reason, the reason for that, Scott, was they uh, they actually have open slots that they have to fill from other deputies. It's not that they're just taking them out of the blue. Yeah. So they will kind of know ahead of time, it's like vacation fill-ins and stuff. Uh -huh. so they have to have a spot for where they, or they can't pay them, right? So well, I, I, I agree with you, but that's not- So you're saying, you're saying that they don't have any spots for patrol officers? Is that what they said? No, what they're gonna, they're, there's gonna be times coming up where other patrol officers, West Side County, are going to be taking vacation and different stuff, and they're going to use a few of those shifts of these people filling in, oh. and the county is going to pay them instead of us. They'll still drive through Black Earth, and then, but it'll be in a county car, and they'll be working for the county at that time. Yeah, I would like to just kind of keep like 12, 12 days a year. Yeah, and hopefully more if we can. And maybe more, maybe more, well, depending on how it goes. We get to decide that. And let's, and we should also kind of look at when they start taking them. I mean, yeah. if they're taking them every Friday, Saturday night, right? It's like no. That's yeah. my point. Yeah. yeah, just as long as we keep an eye on it. Yep. It's not like all the major That's times right. that we, you know, and do. our deputies don't decide it. The captain does. Yeah. So, are you talking Captain Tetzloff? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have one more thing to piggyback on that that might be kind of a concern. I know that if we don't have our normal patrol officers working and they do um, a floating one, are my words for it, um, if they get called away to a call, let's say in, you know, outside our area, they've got to go and file that report then there. And it has to be in person is my understanding. So 
we need to be prepared that that's going to affect our shift the next day then if that officer needs to go um, if it's one of our officers that's working remotely in another municipality um, that they and, I, and it could be some the distance they're, they're working for the county not another village their their reports can even be done here it's, it's usually done by a secondary person based on notes that they've taken so that that's not that's not fact so well, I, I, I talked to Officer Cartman himself, and that's what he said, and he's been at this job for quite some time. He said that the problem with um, that is that he has to be in person at that. So I think we need some clarity because that's what it's coming from the horse's mouth. So, and I don't do his job and you don't do his job. So maybe we should hear firsthand from the deputy themselves. They'd be still building the county is going to be paying more. County. You're not yeah. paying for it. I mean, we wouldn't Absolutely pay for them to go to the next county. Right. So. No. I'm not talking well, about I, who I, gets I, paid. I, what I'm talking I, about I, is it affects the means. next ship. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the report. I think it has to do is if there's an arrest somewhere and they have to go to court right. for that jurisdiction, it, they will have time off. Now, if that's still a county problem, we won't pay for that. Yeah. Right. So. No, it's not about the payment. I think we're not communicating. Um, it's about the next day and resolving if they get called away and there's a report that needs to be filed because there's some instance that occurred in a different municipality. They've got to go to that municipality to resolve that. That's, he told me that's not done online. It can't be done remotely. And so it might affect the shift, the next shift that that deputy works. If that's the next day, that deputy is going to need to be there or can't come back here. They have to get that done there. I think I would just once again like to hear it from the horse's mouth from the people that actually do the work um, and, and what their experience is with that so that we have all the information before we decide. Money is a huge factor, but of course, hearing. Um, so this, is, this is a committee report, so we'll, we'll send that, send your questions to the police committee and they can look into that. Um, the officers can't answer questions. About yeah, the and there's only one municipality. It's Dane County. They don't go to. They don't work in the village across plains. They don't work. So we'll we'll figure that out. But uh, police committee can ask that question. Okay. Hey Mary, would you email please your questions? And then I'm sorry, to please. I'm sorry. What? Would you email? Would you email police committee that question, please? Yes. That'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, back door is starting to stick again. Uh, <laughs> the door company's still waiting for the control key. Dane County has somewhere to fix it. Uh, I, Mitch, maybe you can speak more to that. I don't. I don't know what that's all. Why don't we don't? Why we don't have a key? I... We're working on it. <laughs> okay. Um, Vinny reported the garage door jam. The foundation situation possibly causing the issue. Um, Mitch, what was going on with the Bel Air? Would you speak to that? Um, I'm not quite sure. The Bel Air Motel was purchased um, with the intent of turning it into a inpatient rehab rehabilitation place. In-house. Oh. Yeah. In yeah. um, at that point, uh, the town of Maisel decided that they voted to take it not to approve it, but it had to go to the county, so I don't know where it's at. Um, I do believe that the school had some concerns because of the location of the school yeah. um, and then putting up fences and yeah. keep people in. So the school is also sent a letter of concern. And they think okay. it's a valuable... The school thinks it's a valuable situation and a very need in the community, but not sure the location is the right spot. Um, I think that's the right way to word it, right? Well, it's yeah, it's called not not in my backyard. Yeah, that's popular, yeah. very popular. Well, the other um, one there now. Yeah, will be one there. So that's what it was, Scott. I think there was also concern about the it was a treatment plan for recovering drug and alcohol, and they were within walking distance of work. Yeah, that was my comment. Yeah, yeah. Um, was that. Was that a good right. proximity location? Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. I'm sorry that I wasn't at the meeting, but okay. The next meeting then will be uh, every other month, unless the need arises to schedule sooner. So March 15th, 
We'll meet at 5.15 p.m. Are there any questions? And if so, ask Mitch. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other business that may be brought before the board for future agenda? Got anything other than rebringing the puppy mills thing back, which we're going to do anyways? Oh, I like that back. All right. Hearing none, meeting announcement. March 1st. Okay. Yeah, first Tuesday of the month. All right, same time, same place. I'll entertain Move. a motion to adjourn. Move adjourn. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Jared seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stay away from Thanks the plague, everybody. folks. Yeah. Yes. Be well. Yeah.